Massachusetts, you are watching the ACC on ESPN. Well, the Boston College Eagles have got their work cut out tonight. They welcome undefeated and number four Virginia to Conti Forum. Will Fleming alongside Boston College great Malcolm Huckabee and Malcolm to keep everybody in the loop. As of right now, in the interest of accuracy, there are three undefeated teams, although Houston is somewhat on the ropes. Under review right now, but you look at this Virginia team that we're going to see tonight, uh, they're calling card defense. The best team on defense in college basketball, this Virginia club, Tony Bennett has done an outstanding job with this team. They make it so difficult for you to score. We're going to dissect all that all night long. It should not surprise you that the D is going, but primetime scores, these two guys, especially of late, Malcolm, have really been lighting it up. Kyle Guy has been on fire in his last three games. He's averaging 22, shooting 67 from the floor, and 70% from the three-point line, I'd say uh, he's shooting the ball pretty good right now. And on the other side, Kai Bowman for Boston College. He does a little bit of everything for this team. He'll rebound, he'll assist. But I think in tonight's game, he is going to have to put up some big numbers on the offensive side. One into the backcourt to Ty Jerome, who had an enormous game a year ago against Boston College. We'll be holding our breath a little bit when Kyle Guy gets the first three-pointer off. He's made 11 in a row. There's the starting five for Tony Bennett. Jack Salt right away in the post. He is the man in the middle for five really good ones for the Hoos. And uh, Virginia is so patient on the offensive side. That time he slipped the screen, and then he got pretty good post position. That's going to be something we're watching as this game goes along. And Malcolm, you know, this is such a tough pack-it-in defense. As Bowman tries for three and nails it, an encouraging start. And that's what you like to see if you're Boston College. Oh, look, he's going to have to have a big night for Boston College if they have any chance whatsoever of pulling off the upset. And he has had some in his career. Here's DeAndre Hunter, the man that most people think is the best NBA prospect on this UVA team. we got some NBA faces in the arena tonight, including Danny Ainge, the Boston Celtics, just to our left. And a traveling violation on a man that they think is a real key for them, Mamadi Diakite who has been a real nice presence in the post. Yeah, Tony Bennett really has been pleasantly surprised with his play and the production that he has provided them. And on the other side for Boston College, uh, they're going to have to keep that defensive intensity up uh, for the full 40 minutes in this game. So it, to counter this tremendous defense as the first shot attempt goes up for the sharpshooter, Jordan Chapman, it does not go. Malcolm, it, it, how do you counter it? We've seen the three hit from Bowman, but what can you do to try to get clean looks? Well, you're going to have to obviously not turn the ball over. Uh, that's been a little bit of a problem for Boston College turnovers, uh, but then individual plays. You're going to have to break them down. They're not going to give you much dribble penetration, so you're going to have to make some individual plays, and that's where I say Bowman's going to have to be big in this game. Uh, five on the shot clock for Virginia. Jerome goes it alone. Down the lane. A lot of contact. No call. And a shot clock violation, encouraging defensive stop. And how about this, Malcolm? Now UVA, one of only two undefeated as Houston has lost at Temple. Wow, and uh, certainly a lot of folks looking at that Houston club, Kelvin Sampson, uh, but no more undefeated. Uh, but all eyes on the ACC and then obviously the country on this Virginia team. A lot of debate whether or not they're the best team in college basketball right now. I think... Duke is obviously in that conversation. And the other unbeaten, Michigan, both will be tested a Saturday from now when UVA is at Duke and Michigan visits Wisconsin. Who will be the last remaining undefeated? I'd say early on, very encouraging defense from Boston College. Second straight trip under 10 on the shot clock. DeAndre Hunter down the lane, put back, and that is good. And welcome to those of you joining us on ESPN News. UVA with an early one-point lead. One of two remaining undefeated teams in college basketball with Malcolm Huckabee. Will Fleming inside Conti Forum. And Malcolm, what have you seen in the early going? Well, exactly what we expected from Virginia. Tight defense, but Ty Bowman uh, has now hit two threes uh, for Boston College. 
And we talked about uh, what Boston College needed to do to pull off the upset against Virginia. Uh, it's going to start with Kai Bowman. He is going to have to put up big numbers uh, for Boston College. He is most capable of that. He's got games of 44 and 38 this year, and he's had a couple early triples. Speaking of that, here's Kyle Guy, who passes up a look and uncourts. How about 12 straight threes made for Kyle Guy? Over 70% in his last three games from beyond the arc. Uh, again, poor closeout by Boston College. You got to communicate. Uh, he's the one guy you cannot give any airspace uh, whatsoever. He's been automatic as of late. There's a triple for Jordan Chapman. So hot shooting early for the Eagles. And you would have to say, Malcolm, going all the way back to that first round NCAA tournament, UVA. That's what they want. They want to dare you to take threes. You do play with fire. BC is at three early. Yeah, and they've been contested three, so if you're UVA, you're going to live with that. Um, they very rarely give you open looks. Speaking of open looks, a two-hand flush for Diakite. Well, Boston College in shoot-around, we saw them working on switching a one through four. That time, no communication, and uh, that's the result right there. A wide-open, uncontested dunk. Uh, the loss in the first round, the first time ever that a one seed fell to a 60. That, that is a cloud that hangs over this UVA team as Hamilton misses a triple. That is sort of the preamble. They've talked about it. They're not shying away from it, Malcolm. They know that they will be judged ultimately by what happens in March, but that is not to say they're not supremely focused on the ACC slate at hand. Well, I've been impressed with uh, their maturity, how they've handled that. They knew they were going to get those questions. And UVA tied here early in Boston, but how about this? They are the only team undefeated in the country along with Michigan. We'll see if they keep it that way when we come back. On in this one, we are tied at nine in Boston, and, and Kyle Guy is a sharpshooter. Mar Malcolm Huckabee, he has got to work all the time to get those looks. Well, in his last three games, we talked about his numbers, over 70% from beyond the arc. So you know you're going to draw a lot of attention. Uh, all eyes on him that time, though. Uh, no communication by Boston College, and uh, they give him a pretty clean look. Uh, that is something that cannot happen if you're Boston College. He has been almost automatic in these last three games for Virginia. Uh, they got to do a better job closing out on him, communicating when they switch, but he can't get in the airspace from uh, beyond the arc. About those switches, Malcolm, we, we talked to Jim Christian, and one of the real focal points before this game was against certain shooters, and absolutely, Guy is one of those. They are going to slip those screens, but you think in the early going, we've seen one of the repercussions of, of making those switches. Yeah, and again, if you're not used to that, so typically uh, one through three, it's okay, but then when you involve the four, uh, those guys aren't typically used to switching out onto guard, so I think that might be something that might be problematic for Boston College as this game progresses. Communication, though, is going to be key anytime you switch one through four. And it is just not pleasing, Jim Christian, the open looks that we've seen under the basket, at least three of them early on it, and again, that four man out of position leading to, to bunnies under the bucket. Still tied at nine. This is a kid they love here at Boston College and an early bucket for Winston Tabs. He's been dealing with injury. He is a prime time scorer and a real key tonight. And I think he is going to be key for Kai Bowman. Take a little pressure off him. Obviously he can score, but I think taking Kai Bowman off the ball and making him a two is going to be huge for Boston College. Miss Jam, but a put back. What a start early on for Diakite. Well, Diakite has been huge early on in this game, as you said, all over the offensive glass. That's just great effort and hustle. Bowman is heavily involved early, not at all surprising. Here is Winston Tabbs going down the lane and, and looking healthy. And this is the key guy for Boston College back in the lineup. Provide that extra ball hander, handler, and then he has been providing some nice offensive numbers for Boston College. The man who now guards Bowman is Kihei Clark, who you can see the brace on his left wrist. He had surgery in December, but he's toughed it out. He's not missed action as Popovich goes to work. A nice move off the glass, but clearly Tony Bennett knows that Bowman has got it going, and he's bringing in what he thinks is his best on-ball defender to try to answer. Now, 
live from the Conti Forum in Boston, Massachusetts. Tie ball game. One of the two remaining undefeated teams in the country. UVA at Boston College. Will Fleming, Malcolm Huckabee. This one's been fun early, Malcolm. It has been. And Virginia coming into this game undefeated. And uh, for my money, one of the best, if not the best defensive team in college basketball. Uh, they just make it really difficult for you to score. We've seen a lot of three makes early. We, we thank you for jumping from the app to news to you. You're, you're hanging with us, and, and once we get our feet underneath us, we're going to show you some really interesting things about Virginia's Ty Jerome, who had a monster game here a year ago, knocks down a triple. And that's been one of the stories of the game. The three-point shot falling for both sides. Yeah, it has. And for Boston College, you got to do a better job closing out. As you said, last year had a huge game against Boston College, and they can ill afford to give him clean looks from beyond the arc. Kai Bowman is the man to highlight for this team. There's Clark for three. That is an air ball. He's not known as a prolific scorer. He's not out there for that. Of course, you don't have to be a great scorer to be a, a valuable piece for Tony Bennett. Case in point, DeAndre Hunter with the rejection. Look out. Guy gives up a three. A lot of contact, and it goes. Well, he just continues to be on fire. We talked about his last three games. Uh, Kyle Guy averaging 22 points, shooting 67% from the floor, and over 70 from beyond the arc. Uh, he has been on fire. He made a triple early in this game. Popovich, he's been heavily involved. Malcolm, we saw Kyle Guy draw that defender out to the three-point line. He, he clearly is aware of the scouting report and took advantage. Blew by. Yeah. A really heads-up play. On the other side, Boston College doing some nice things offensively. Ty Bowman hit a couple of threes early on, and then we've seen some nice ball movement. Speaking of, Guy, a rare miss from three. Bowman look at a push against this Virginia team. Isn't that really important when you can push it and get easy buckets? Chapman, no, and Guy the rebound. Well, you can't ask for a better look if you're Boston College. Chapman, who has been struggling from beyond the arc, a guy that's normally a reliable three-point shooter. Uh, but again, that's great ball movement. And against a team like Virginia, when you get a clean look like that, you'll live with that if you're a Jim Christian. Guy to Jerome. Hello. Another three for the Cavaliers. That's just unselfish by Kyle Guy. Passing up a three. Uh, to a wide open three for his teammate and again to unselfishness by Virginia uh, that is why they are undefeated and one of the top teams in the country look Tony Bennett talks about this all the time looked like Bowman took an extra step down the lane but rejected out of bounds they have quietly it feels like gotten out to this six point lead undefeated UVA 21 15 over BC Undefeated Virginia, six-point lead at Boston College. Both teams breaking the huddle. And we welcome you inside the arena alongside Malcolm Huckabee, Will Fleming. And Malcolm, you know, Tony Bennett has made a career drawing up great defense, but it's this year that he's got some more toys to play with on the other end. Yeah, and they've been dominant on the defensive side, as you talk about. That's their calling card. But uh, they have some guys that can really score the basketball. Kyle Guy right now is probably playing the best in all of college basketball. In his last three games, he's averaging 22 points, shooting 67% from the floor and over 70 from the three-point line. Uh, he has just been on fire and I think a big reason why they are undefeated in one of the top teams in college basketball. Well, and look, this, this sounds crazy to say, but it's dead true against Virginia. 15 points in the first 10 minutes is a huge number. I mean, Jim Christian said if they get to 60, he'd be thrilled. They're on pace to do that. How about these numbers for UVA? Only two teams have 60 or more this year and six under 50. So all things considered, BC's got to be pretty pleased with the way that it's gone offensively. Yeah, and they're getting some clean looks. If they have any shot whatsoever pulling off the upset, they're going to have to knock down some of these open threes. Right, look at those numbers. Now, it's just crazy. He has built an ACC juggernaut, has Tony Bennett. Again, we'll get into the, the NCAA tournament, what this team looks like in that realm, but 51 and a half points allowed a game. That that was a ridiculous effort at Florida State. They've been dominant on the road in conference. They've won 10 straight as they commit an offensive foul, but it, it just seems like, Malcolm, a marriage made in heaven, Tony Bennett and Virginia. Yeah, just dominant. I mean, that's really the only word that I can use to describe how they've been on defense, uh, I think, for Boston College or any team playing them 
uh, Jim Christian used the number 60. If they can get to 60, uh, many have tried uh, this year. And the one that did get to 60, Virginia, was in a blowout. They put up 100 against Marshall. So, again, a tall task for Boston College tonight. Good deflection by Guy, and Clark comes away with it. And that's something that UVA will do. They'll turn you over, and they hardly ever give it away on the other end. Clark will try again from deep. And he has not found the range. Jared Hamilton, the Hamilton brothers for BC. Jarius, one of the top recruits they've ever had. Maybe the highest since Jared Dudley came onto campus. And Jim Christian has had himself an injury-plagued year coming off a 19-win season. It's been late that's been difficult for the Eagles. Yeah, it really has. And obviously losing Jerome Robinson to the NBA last year, a lottery pick. Um, but they still have Kai Bowman. Um, the margin for error for them in terms of injury is really small. So they've been without some guys. Uh, but he has to be pleased early on in this game with how his team has executed on offense. Uh, they've got some open looks, which is uh, not something that a lot of teams do against this Virginia defense. Do you think Bowman has been more contained now that Kihei Clark has come onto the floor? I think he has, but uh, right there, you see a nice move by Chapman. Again, really something that you're not used to seeing, a dribble drive and uncontested layup. Uh, that time by Chapman against Virginia. <laughs> that is totally wild against UVA defensively. I think of him as kind of a yin and yang guy, Chapman. If he's on, he can be tremendous. Speaking of, man, Mamadi Diakite is on fire. He's got 10 of Virginia's 23 points. They've had no answer for him. He's been on the offensive glass early that time right there. That's just too easy. Uh, no resistance that time by Popovic's in. That's really an uncontested layup. Uh, he has been playing some nice minutes early on in this game. Popovich has got three buckets early. He has penetrated. And against this Pac D, that's not an easy thing to do. Yeah, Pop saying right back at you. <laughs> easy buckets. Not easy to come by against UVA. The Alabama transfer, Braxton Key, is on the floor for the first time for UVA. Here's Diakite trying to get it going. And talk about a, a mismatch against Chris Heron Jr. as DeAndre Hunter knocks down the three. Well, nice patience that time by Virginia. Boston College went to a little matchup 2-3 zone, and communication was not there. Hunter with a wide-open look. In some ways, it's unfair, all the criticism of UVA, even though, of course... The first one to lose to a 16. They did not have Hunter in that first round loss. He is their most dynamic player. And of all the, the guys on the floor tonight, maybe save for Bowman. He's the guy that all the NBA eyes are on tonight. Yeah, plenty of NBA execs here. As we take a look at Hunter, big boy move right there. Yeah, he is just so strong. That's the kind of move that will make those scouts drool. Hunter and UVA lead by nine. Number one, Notre Dame. Number two, Louisville. Oh, my. Thursday at 7 on ESPN. Well, Saturday, we've got an afternoon ACC College Hoops doubleheader for you on ESPN. The two clubs that ACC favorite UVA will have to buy with. Carolina and Duke both in action. The 12th ranked Tar Heels are those Louisville at the Dean Dome at noon Eastern. Then... A guy named Zion Williamson, number one Duke there in Tallahassee, where UVA just destroyed Florida State. They'll take on the number 13 Seminoles in a Sonic blockbuster. Both games also stream live on the ESPN app, so you, Malcolm, can watch anywhere. I love it, man. Best time of the year. It's got college hoops going on, got the NFL, but right now Boston College in desperate need of a bucket, and Kai Bowman, again, uh, able to get to the basket. That's twice now we've seen Boston College a straight line drive and if you're Jim Christian you'll take that look anytime your best player getting to the rack without much help that's the thing coaches love right you, you draw it up in the huddle and execute it to perfection that move for Bowman one on two transition D is such a point of emphasis for Tony Bennett three is off and UVA will have it you know, it's interesting, Malcolm. Early on, BC makes a couple threes. They have an early lead at 13-11. and 11. At, at, Since then, for UVA, it's a 17-8 run. It, in the blink of an eye, almost sort of quietly, this is what they do 
They have burst out in front. And the guy that really has done it, Diakiti, he's on the on the uh, bench right now. Uh, but he's got 10 points. He came into this game averaging six. Uh, Boston College really has not had an answer for his presence in the post. There's a lot of NBA noise around DeAndre Hunter last year as Jarius Hamilton gets his first bucket. The miss on the other end, Malcolm, that little mid-range jumper. If he is truly going to be an elite NBA type talent, that's the kind of thing that's got to be further honed, don't you think? Yeah, you got to be able to score at all three levels at the next level. Travel down the lane as Jay Huff off the bench for Diakite on step two in. And that's something that Boston College talked about this morning. That shoot around, the communication, again, they're switching a lot, one through four. The rotations have to be on point that time. Nice team defense by Boston College. Oh, stop the juice play. For UVA, that is their fourth turnover, which for the Cavaliers, that is an avalanche of giveaways. Yeah, right now they lead the nation in fewest turnovers per game, uh, only averaging eight turnovers, and again, just a rarity for them to turn the ball over. They do an excellent job taking care of the ball. You see, goes to work, trailing by five, Hamilton. And a foul on the floor. This is something that Jim Christian talked a lot about. There's Luka Kraljevic, the Slovenian, and they are trying to find any kind of rotation with all the bodies that Virginia brings at you. It is, it is a heavyweight bout against these Cavaliers. Yeah, right now, again, the health, uh, Jim Christian talked about it. Just finding enough guys uh, to be healthy, that has really been problematic for them uh, early on in the season. Tabish really shown off some shake as that's three in the corner. After a pretty quick start and an active one, Kyle Guy has been relatively quiet since. You think they'll look to get him off some screens here. Well, watch away from the ball. Right now, Boston College is switching uh, on one through four. Deep Guy off the screen and good. That time, heads up play by Virginia. Uh, they go off the five, no switch. The helper hedge is not there. And again, he just continues to be on fire shooting the ball. You know, for those of us who like to dig a little deeper into the advanced analytic numbers, Kyle Guy is about the best player in the country coming off screen. So you can understand why Tony Bennett does so many things and adds so many wrinkles to get him free. Well, his footwork is just... Really, some of the best I've seen coming off screens. That time, a little flare. Pretty good D there. A good closeout by Bowman and a little strong for Guy. What kind of toll does it take offensively on someone like Bowman to have to be so alert on the other end? Well, one of the things we talked to Jim Christian about at shoot around, they might go to some zone uh, to try to uh, limit some of the fatigue because, again, you're right, it's tough chasing him off screens. Uh, I hated guarding guys like that. And take a look at this right here. I mean, he's coming off a couple of screens. And now, smart play that time by Virginia. Uh, have him come off a pin down for the five. Uh, no communication. And he is just too good of a shooter to give him any airspace whatsoever. He's almost automatic right now. When you were such a great player here at, at Boston College, Malcolm, what did that mean for you on the on the other side as you're trying to run the offense? What an impressive play that is down the lane for Braxton Key. But when you're working that hard on defense, what do you have to do to flip the switch the other way? Well, I know how tiring it was uh, back in my playing days, chasing guys like Ray Allen <laughs> around and Kerry Kittles. and It takes a lot out of you. I think, though, it takes a team, though. You have to have hedges that time right there, the last time where a guy scored. Uh, the bigs, uh, they have to slow him down a little bit, try to stick him, stick out, give him a little hip check to slow him down. Um, and then you have to communicate if you're Boston College, if you're going to switch one through four. Because uh, Virginia early on in this game has slipped some screens, which has led to some open, uh, uncontested layups. Key, who, who led the Hoos with 20 at Florida State, a, a truly dominating win. He's got three early. Chapman cannot find it with the three. But look, the final score, Malcolm, of that game against Florida State does not tell the whole story. They led by 28 with just under three minutes to go. Only when Leonard Hamilton pulled full court press against the walk-ons did the Knowles 
get it a little bit more respectable on the bottom line. Hunter not quite in sync offensively. Diakite back onto the floor, and he draws a foul on the offensive foul. It was so impressive what UVA did to Florida State. And again, 13 points. That does not tell the whole story. That was a demolition against the top 10 team. Well, just a year ago, these two teams met in Charlottesville. Ty Jerome had himself a monster game, and Malcolm and UVA got a real scare from D.C. Yeah, they really did, and well, we talked about the departed uh, Jerome Robinson, a lottery pick last year, right there pulling up for the three. Uh, he's not walking through the door this year <laughs> for Boston College. They still do have Ty Bowman, but uh, that was a nail-biter right there. Tony Bennett uh, showing some love and respect, but... Uh, that guy right there uh, was pretty good for Boston College last year and again for Boston College this year if they have any chance whatsoever pulling off the upset of uh, the number from the three-point line is gonna have to go up thunderous dunk from Dia Kikte he's got 12 and they have to find a answer for him uh, right now he has just dominated uh, on the offensive glass that time though showing off the hops uh, with the strong finish uh, right now, Boston College shooting 27% from the three-point line, three of 11. Uh, that number is going to have to go up. I, it's safe to say as Key draws the charge on Hamilton, I, I guess Tony Bennett knows his club a little bit. He said to us before this one, look, everybody talks about Guy and Hunter, but it's this guy right here, Diakite. He can make us really dynamic. He called them the X Factor. He did. And coaches, they have a pretty good sense, obviously, what's going on. And that's what he said. He's our X Factor. He's the guy that gives us that low post presence, and uh, he certainly has provided that and some tonight. And why not? Go right back to him. Back at Popovich down. How about that on the baseline? Everything but the finish. Do you think that when you're so fixated on all these great shooters, that it just opens up things in the middle? Well, absolutely. I'll use the football terminology. You don't want to fall in love with the pass until you establish the run, and you got to have balance. And that's what uh, Virginia and Tony Bennett is trying to do right now, uh, get an inside-out game, and Diakite tonight has done that for them. You know, for all the great things that they've done, Malcolm, that has not been something that Tony Bennett has been able to find at Virginia. They have their own formula that has been brilliant, but interior scoring, not a part of it. How about a deep jumper for Diakite? Maybe not his sweet spot. Here's Chris Heron Jr., the son of the NBA player, and he knocks down his first triple. Big, big sequence right here for BC. And he has given them some really nice minutes inserted into the starting lineup uh, for some games because of injuries. And, uh, again, that's what you want when you go to your bench, somebody that comes in and provides a spark. And uh, Chris Heron Jr. has done that for Boston College uh, this season. The tabs hurt. He started four games. As you said, he was very effective as down the lane, a little foul. And it looks like pop. Good, good shooting form for the three. And uh, right there, you rarely see Virginia gamble on a steal. Again, uh, they're so good defensively, but they do it in a different way. Uh, they play that pack line defense. Uh, they play their gaps. Uh, rarely where you see them do that, and that's uh, really a mistake uh, by Virginia. I believe it was Jerome that time going for the steal. You don't get it, and the result, a wide-open look for Chris Heron Jr. When you win 30 games as many times as Tony Bennett has, you don't have to wear a tie on the sideline. It, it, I think it's funny. He did not do that at Washington State where he was so successful. He comes to Virginia, the heart of preppy land, and after a few games, some boosters pulled him aside and said, Tony, you know, down here we do kind of wear neckties. Well, when you when you win the ACC as many times as he has, the tie can come back up. Absolutely. Ty Jerome short for three. Off the window, he finds the touch. So in other words, Malcolm, if you do the job we know you're going to do tonight, next time, no tie for you. Well, I think right now, though, for Boston College, turnovers uh, are hurting them. And then on the offensive side for Virginia, it's just too easy. Get it right back. Popovich rejected, but a goal 10 for Diakita. Well, I'd like to see if that ball was coming down. Popovich, nice job on the offensive glass. Uh, it's tough to tell from that angle right there. Uh, but Diakite inserting his will 
That looked pretty clean right there, though. Maybe not yet on the way down. This is amazing. You know, you scout these teams, Malcolm. You watch them on tape. There have been some guys out on the floor as Akite again with two. And we talked about this. If you're going to switch, you have to communicate. If you don't communicate, what the result is, is uncontested layups. Virginia is putting on a clinic right now, slipping screens. Almost another giveaway. Here's one of the men who is not often on the floor. DeAndre Hunter cannot corral it, but it, Irvin's mistakes. We've had so many guys that just don't get regular minutes. The Jim Christian, because of the injury, primarily to Stefan Mitchell, he is their best rebounder, their toughest interior player. He just had to try new faces. Yeah, and that really hurts them tonight. Uh, Stefan Mitchell out. Uh, he's Boston College's leading rebounder. He's fourth in the ACC, uh, close to nine rebounds a game, and uh, that certainly hurts them. But this guy right here, again, if Boston College has any chance whatsoever of pulling off an upset, uh, Kai Bowman is going to have to have a huge game. Remember last year, they upset Duke. Kai Bowman went off for a near triple-double, 30 points, 8 assists, 9 rebounds. Uh, the guy certainly can do a little bit of everything, but they're going to need more of that tonight. It's third three, he's got 11. He makes it a 10-point game. UVA deep in the shot clock. Jerome down the lane. Time for one last shot. Figure Bowman will give it a heave. Good if it went, but offline. And UVA will take a 12-point lead into the locker room. So they're undefeated. One of two left in the country. Boston College has made some triples early, but like they so often do. UVA battles back. Diakite in the Hoos by 12. UVA a 12-point lead, and people in these parts know that guy, Danny Ainge, running the show for the Boston Celtics. There's some NBA talent on display here tonight, Malcolm. Yeah, and several other NBA execs and scouts in the building tonight. Uh, plenty of talent around, but uh, I think that guy could shoot it back in the day <laughs> uh, for the Boston Celtics. I have to say, I was a Lakers fan. I'm going to say that. I was a Lakers fan. You'd be careful, he's right next to I us. I couldn't stand the Celtics. Either you love... <laughs> The Celtics. Did you, you say that them? out loud when you went to school here? I kept that on wraps when I was on <laughs> campus around here. Certainly, though, a lot of talent out on the court tonight. Uh, both teams, uh, we talked about it, the formula for Boston College to pull off the upset in this game. Uh, they're going to need a couple of things to happen. Kai Bowman's going to have to continue to shoot the ball at a high clip and get hot. But then defensively, uh, they're going to have to put up some resistance. Uh, in particular, uh, in the post, they cannot give up uncontested layups and dunks in this game. Yeah, too many of that from Diakite. You know, Danny Ainge, a tremendous player, of course. I, I think he'd be hard-pressed to find anybody who would say there are many better executives in the whole league than he is. Cavs, a good start for the Eagles. Well, we've seen that uh, tonight. Virginia giving up uncontested layups. That's really... Uh, something that you're just not used to seeing against this Virginia defense, uh, the best in college basketball right now. You know, it's interesting. We watch Hunter and, and reading scouting reports and watching video of, of the Cavaliers as he turns it over. I, I think he, he looks really rusty and maybe not as assertive, Hunter, but how about Tabs on the other end? Well, he has been the key uh, for Boston College in this early season, uh, providing that extra ball handler, taking a little pressure off Kai Bowman. He was out. Uh, with a knee injury in, uh, in a game like tonight, they definitely need his offense and ball handling out on the court. Diakite on the other end to block his 12th of the year. But don't you think that, that Hunter, who got a lot of NBA run in the offseason, decided to come back? I don't think he looks as fluid on the offensive end. Well, I think it's the system. Obviously, uh, the way Tony Bennett plays, uh, they're not going to do a lot in terms of just one-on-one -on -one and guys isolating. Sort of... One of the things that folks talk about in terms of their NCAA tournament monkey is Hunter misses a three. What happens when you're down 10 in a, a Sweet 16 or an Elite 8 game? Can you go to your stars? People think Hunter can be that guy. They go to the post for Popovich and Salt. And that's going to be his third foul. He was on the bench for a lot of the first half with two. And immediately here, 90 seconds into the second, he picks up his third. Well, I like what Jim Christen has done coming out in the second half. 
uh, they switched to a 2-3 matchup zone. Uh, the man-to-man -man was not working in that first half. Uh, you come out in the second half, and uh, they've been able to get some stops. Obviously, we're only under two minutes into the uh, second half, but I like the change of defense by Jim Christian going to the zone because uh, obviously in that first half, man-to-man -man was not working for them, in particular down low in the paint. And off of Bates, they've actually shown a little full-court press at times. UVA has not had trouble dealing with that as of yet. You know, I think that that's what makes what Danny Ainge and so many of these NBA guys, what they do is so impressive in that it, they, they seem to be able to look beyond individual games and seasons to see what makes a great NBA player. Maybe even on a night like tonight, Danny sees things in Hunter that says, wait a minute, that will translate to the next level. Oh, he's got a pretty good seat court side here at Conti for him. How about that pass? But Diakite cannot handle it. And the Eagles to the floor. They look to push. Even with that three on three is Hamilton down the lane. He is fouled. I mean, UVA, Malcolm, they pride themselves on transition. They got two guys diving for the ball on the other end. And look, it, Hamilton gets to the free throw line, but they got three guys in the lane waiting for him. Well, the numbers don't lie. You look at uh, what Virginia has done this year uh, so far in college basketball. They've been dominant. I mean, that's really the only way you can describe them dominant on defense. They're first in points allowed, only allowing opponents 51 points per game. Uh, they're second in field goal percentage D, and opponents only shoot 24% from the three-point line. So right now, you look at Boston College, uh, they're over 35%. Uh, if you're Jim Christian, you have to be happy that you're within arm's reach of this game uh, because up until this point, not too many teams have been close to Virginia. These fans are starting to feel it a little bit. Close as they've been in some time, a seven-point lead. More zone defense. Can't leave that guy open. Guy misses. Tapped out by Key. And it'll be BC basketball. Boston College, very fortunate that time. Guy, uh, we talked about his numbers the last three games, shooting over 70% from the three-point line. He got a clean look. Uh, that's a fortunate break for Boston College. Bowman, Chapman. Nice little one-two to Popovich. A good D by Diakite. People think that this is, if not the best, one of the best offensive teams that Tony Bennett has had, and, and Key is a big part of that. Again, 20 points at Florida State. He's been relatively quiet tonight, but again, Malcolm, look, hanging over all of this, it is wonderful for UVA that they're undefeated. They're off to another great start. A corner three try for Chapman won't go, but that is the story. That is how they will be judged in March in the NCAA tournament, and, and it's going to be can they score enough to win big games. Absolutely, and I would agree with you on that, uh, though I'm not sure I really like those teams with Malcolm Brogdon, uh, Joe Harris, uh, those guys playing for a paycheck right now. Uh, I wouldn't go as far as saying this is his best team. Uh, they're up there, but I'm not ready to give them that title yet. Popovich for three, and all of a sudden, things getting tight in Boston. Well, the change of defense in this second half by Boston College uh, really has worked in slowing down Virginia, really uh, confusing them on offense. They really have not had good offensive possessions to start this second half. The zone has worked to this point, closest they've been since 23 to 19, and Hunter, what a big three. Well, you talked about uh, who they're going to go to when they need a bucket, and uh, DeAndre Hunter, we talked about it. The NBA scouts here, Danny Ainge sitting courtside, and uh, that's what they want to see, his ability, obviously, to put the ball into the basket, and that's nice offense by Virginia. In transition, a little too strong off the hand of Ty Jerome. Can BC inch a little closer? I love this kid, Jarius Hamilton. So encouraged by what he did at Virginia Tech. He really stepped forward once conference play has begun. Tabs is going to draw a foul on the floor. And, and Malcolm, the numbers do not lie. This Virginia team has just been spectacular statistically.
Leads the country in points allowed, turnovers. They're getting it done for Tony Bennett. UFC fans, this is the moment you truly all been waiting for. At 10 days, we are really excited to have UFC on ESPN and ESPN Plus. And, and Malcolm, uh, for these ACC opponents the last several years, Playing this Virginia team, their style, it can feel like being in the octagon. It really can, and, you know, the numbers, as you said, don't lie. They have just uh, been so dominant on defense, uh, but right now, Boston College uh, doing a nice job hanging around in this game and uh, getting some quality looks uh, against this uh, very good Virginia defense. Now, this is one of those weird games, I think, Malcolm, where if you ask Tony Bennett right now if he's that happy with the way his team is playing, he'd probably tell you no. If you ask Jim Christian, how about your side, he'd say, so far, so pretty good, and yet they're down seven. Well, the number we talked about at the beginning is 60. Uh, to this date, Virginia is holding opponents to 51 points per game. Right now, Boston College is at 41 uh, with uh, over... 13 minutes to play in this game, so you got to be feeling pretty good if you're Jim Christian in Boston College. Definitely on pace. They they could have held Florida State, a top 10 team, in the 30s as Hunter, a big bucket. Malcolm, the story of this half, when Boston College has clawed closer, UVA over and over has had answers. And that's a bad matchup. Great recognition by Virginia. You cannot have Winston Tabb trying to guard uh, DeAndre Hunter. That's just a mismatch, and Again, good recognition by Virginia to get him isolated in that area, and that's just too easy. There's Tab again trying to go down the lane, and he called for a foul. Don't you think that Jarius Hamilton is starting to look much more assertive? Oh, he really is, and it's a great story, him and his brother playing together uh, for the first time. I know that whole family uh, is watching them, but uh, certainly he has provided them some nice minutes on both ends, defensively and offensively. Uh, for Boston College. Kind of a package deal. They, the two of them came together. Jared decided to transfer from Georgia Southern. And it was a really cool moment when for the first time Jared checked into a game and, and Jerry saw his brother come onto the floor together. He was truly legitimately emotional about it. You can understand that playing with your brother in the ACC. Uh, just really, again, just a great story. Uh, on the other end, again, Virginia, that pack line defense, that last possession right there, great illustration of team defense. I'm trying to show you some of the ways that they really stay in front of the basketball as Chapman. There it is. Defenders in front. More zone defense. And UVA's made some adjustments to this look. Right now, Boston College is switching. Daring Clark to try from three instead. Up top, triple for Key is too strong. And the Eagles hold. Tabs from way downtown. Three's in transition, not the worst idea, but that was a bad miss. Yeah, that one was a little deep, maybe outside of his range, but... I like the idea by Boston College to get a stop and then try to get out uh, before Virginia can set up that D. Guy in the middle of the zone. Perfect. We haven't called his name. Uh, but again, he right now, I think he's probably playing the best on offense of anybody in college basketball last three games. Over 70% from the three-point line. He's averaging 22 a game in his last three. Been almost automatic. He is an unbelievable story, truly. He, he really has what he says are legitimately four parents. He's got his birth parents, two step parents, and all four of them get along. All four really support him as Salt lays it in, but Jim Christian has seen enough. We'll tell you a little bit more about the interesting story of Kyle Guy, his parents, his engagement. Really intriguing kid trying to bounce back from UMBC a year ago. Wahoos by 13. Kyle, can I ask you a few questions? Yeah, go for it. Do you floss or lie to the dentist about flossing? Uh, unfortunately, I lie to the dentist. What's your favorite music? Hip-hop or Broadway? Hidden talent? Uh, I sing even though I can't. What's your go-to song? Anything High School Musical. Your best New Zealand accent? 
Hello, I'm Jack Salt, and I'll have a bath. I don't know why he says I'll have something, but he just says it that way. Can I ask you a few more? Yeah, sorry, I gotta go to practice. Well, I have a dentist appointment tomorrow morning, Malcolm Huckabee, and I'm very happy to say I don't have to lie about whether I'm floss. Oh, oh, I like that. I'm going to steal that line about <laughs> uh, what's your hidden talent. He said, I sing even though I can't sing, so I like that. I, it, it, what, what's your, I, I, I like flying even though I can't do it. <laughs> so hip-hop and Broadway, something tells me, might like Hamilton just a little bit. Well, the way he's been playing as of late, uh, hard to find somebody that has shot it better. Uh, then Kyle Guy, uh, he has just been on fire. Dare we say he's not thrown away his shot? Jerry is Hamilton, no good. And there he is, Sky in for the rebound. He's a really interesting kid, Malcolm. You know, mentioned that he, he views all four of his parents, his birth parents, his step parents, as really engineering his childhood. He really felt supported from Indianapolis. And he's a, a kid who has lived somewhat in the public eye at Virginia. And we promise the flow of this game will let you hear all about the kid who wants to walk down Broadway sometime as a hot shooter in the NBA. 54-41, Virginia. Guy wants to be in the room where it happens, and he certainly has done a lot off the ball here tonight. And we talked to Tony Bennett at shoot around about some of the great shooters that he's coached. And uh, for those that don't know this, Clay Thompson, the guy that uh, went off for 43 points, seven threes, and only took four dribbles. I asked him, I said, does Guy have any comparisons in terms of how he moves off the ball? He said, yeah, quick release, great footwork. And he's a guy that really understands how to manipulate defenses. And uh, he has been a guy that has been a big reason why Virginia is in the conversation for being the top team in the country. Uh, he has been that good from the perimeter. Uh, uh, seven threes, four dribbles. That's just ridiculous. And Tony did make a lot of comparisons between those two. Both, I mean, Kyle Guy had some offers in his home state of Indiana. He was sort of reviled for picking Virginia. It has obviously worked out well for him. The system, everything about it, he proposed to his girlfriend for the NCAA tournament, which was missed by DeAndre Hunter. But he's a kid who's been very open with the fans of Virginia. He was devastated by that first round NCAA tournament loss. Talked about how he dealt with so much anxiety trying to learn to live in the public eye as Bowman is fouled by Clark going down the line. It, it, it's it's all part of the, the picture these days, Malcolm. It is so much more in their face these days than when you played social media. The constant attention and he looks to be turning a corner in that world. As Aaron missed that three, he's got an interesting story himself. We'll get you some footage of a really neat moment here at Boston College. But I, Kyle Guy is just so fun to watch. He is right now, though, Boston College. Uh, they're getting some clean looks. Uh, that's a good look by Chris Heron Jr. Uh, they were pulling close, but if they have, again, any chance pulling off this upset, they're going to have to knock down some of those open looks. Jack Salt says to Kyle Guy, yes, sir, I'll have another. This is an important possession for Boston College. They really have stalled on the offensive end. They're in desperate need of a bucket. You're going to beat this team. you got to make those open looks. And how about that sky-high block for Key on the other end? Just like that, it's up to a 19-point lead. 12-0 run by Virginia, and uh, that defense... And showing off its dominance right here during this stretch. We've done this all night long. Stretch leads just when BC thinks they can get back in it. They have had answers. Hunter. Ten minutes to go in the ball game. Seems like they found some answers to the zone and in transition, although Clark gives that away. Chris Aaron Jr. That is off the thigh of Key. And Malcolm, when you do it on one end, you get rewarded on the other. Excellent closeout, and then finish off the play, run the floor. Another uncontested layup for Virginia. Uh, they have put on a clinic in this last five uh, to six minute stretch against Boston College. Salt to the bench for UVA. Diakite back onto the floor. It's Chris Heron inbounding. They have not scored the Eagles in 5-12. UVA is burst out in front here. 
How about that stat right there? UVA has only five fewer points in the paint than Boston College has overall. Still on pace, sort of, to, to hit that magic number of 60, but UVA is already there. Abs, good defense by Jerome, and they'll say that it went off of key. And they'll stay with Boston College. Uh, just stifling. I mean, their defense, uh, and they do it in a different way. Watch what the guys are doing off the ball uh, for Virginia. Obviously, they have great on-ball D, but uh, they play their gaps, and uh, they don't give you much going to the basket. Another uh, turnover uh, for Boston College, and uh, that's all set up by the number one defense in college basketball. Uh, they are just so good. Uh, forcing you into difficult shots. I want you to talk a little bit about that, Malcolm. It, it is such a unique, different defense. They they make decisions on the defensive end that are totally different than other teams in terms of when to crash into gaps, when to stay behind the ball as Diakite gets it. But on the other end, Malcolm, they really do it a different way. And again, just look how they defend off the ball, uh, playing their gaps. Uh, they're not going to uh, deny you. They're not like a team like West Virginia where they're going to press you. Uh, they are going to stay home in their gaps and uh, they don't give you anything going towards the basket. Well, fans are going to get a chance to see a whole lot of UVA because ESPN and the ACC will bring you the ACC network in August. 15 universities, one network. Visit getaccn.com to learn more. You figure the Who's will be on, on that network all the time as Bowman desperately needs this triple and it will not go and a foul going to be called on Hamilton battling with Key for the board we're excited about that ACC network Malcolm more exposure for one of the premier leagues in all of college sports August 2019 a lot of teams in the top 20 uh, 25 in this ACC top to bottom really uh, for my money, the best college conference in college basketball, uh, top to bottom. Impressive list of coaches, talent all around, and uh, just so fun to watch. A little full-court look for Boston College. And again, UVA, just no difficulty slicing right through it. Feels like it's now or never for the Eagles. And Virginia's been so patient on offense. Hunter bumped by Popovich. They're doing a nice job getting Hunter isolated uh, in that high post area, and then they're just letting him go to work. This is sort of surprising to me, Malcolm. It is the first time in the history of this league that the ACC has got six teams in the top 15 of the AP rankings. Yeah, you're right. And it just, when we first heard that stat, I was like, I, I got to do a double take because you would just assume that they've had six all at one time, but. Uh, apparently not, and this is the first time. And uh, going back to my earlier comment, top to bottom, it's the best conference in college basketball, and uh, certainly on display tonight. Uh, the top team, if not for some, uh, the second best team in the ACC. We can debate that all along, but uh, certainly all eyes uh, are going to be on uh, the next game up for Virginia at Virginia Tech. But then I assume. Duke, when they get Duke, a lot of folks want to see uh, how this team stacks up against Zion Williamson and the rest of the Duke defense. Jerome is going to be called for an offensive foul. Look, for Jim Christian's team, this is not a bargain here. You go on the road to Virginia Tech to start league play, and then you, you come home. But, but for Virginia, who's undefeated at a top-five team, and they really have their work cut out. It's not just those six in the top 15. It, it is such a loaded league. You know, I think that the win against Florida State, it, the opener when Duke blew the doors off Kentucky, that was kind of a wow moment that sort of made everybody realize, wait a minute, we, we, we may need to recalibrate the, the entire landscape. I sort of think that in the ACC, Malcolm, that win over Florida State in some ways is a similar magnitude win. It's a good win. Obviously a very good Florida State team. As you said, they dismantle them as we take a look at another uncontested dunk. And uh, Diakite has been the player of the game uh, for Virginia. He came into this one only averaging six, and he really has been unstoppable uh, for Boston College. He ties his career high 18 with 7.15 to go. Lead is 22. Tabs. 
forcing the issue and a foul on the floor. Sentence to break. Oh, well, they've been as the top defensive team, but Tia Kite putting on the show in the paint of Virginia's rolling right now. So I want to make sure we make sure we get you guys. Last but not least, Nicola. Maddie. Did you get something? Oh, just gets an apple. I mean, that is such a cool story, a real feel-good moment here. Chris Heron, the son of the NBA star, who, by the way, had a tumultuous time here on Chestnut Hill, came here as a walk-on, and he did everything the right way. And, and the way that Jim Christian not only executed that, but pulled it off, it, it just, that, that, you can't help but smile. Well, when we talked to Jim Christian about it at shoot-around, he said at first, Chris Heron Jr. thought he was handing him his grades. Uh -oh. He thought he might have had He was getting a little <laughs> nervous, like, man, did I do something wrong? Are my grades bad? And then uh, just a great moment, though, when he found out that he, uh, earned that scholarship. He has given them some really quality minutes. All the injuries they've had, he stepped up and the uh, future very bright for that young man. Well, and they kept it a total secret. None of the players knew it, and you could see that in their reaction. Holy organ. Hunter, UVA would like to see him get it going offensively. No call on the bump, and a chance for a three-point play. That is an NBA move at the finish. Well, Boston College is going to have to make a decision. Uh, they went to the zone to start off the second half. I thought that was their best defense. Uh, that's just a bad matchup. Popovic isolated with Hunter, a guy that's going to be potential top 15 pick uh, in the NBA draft. He's going to be playing for a paycheck. And, uh, they're leaving him alone on the island. They either got to come double help or just go to zone. But uh, leaving him one-on-one -on -one, uh, right there, that's just uh, really not a winning situation. It's just a bad matchup. For Boston College. 12 is 17 and a half. You think that's a good no call there on the spin move? Yeah, absolutely. And just a big time move uh, by a big time player. To the Kite, a little bit out of his comfort zone. Bumps Bowman. Who got off to the great start, hit a three to begin the second half. And really, since that time, the UBA has put this thing totally at the fifth gear. Well, they just wear you down. And again, they do it so different from other teams that you think of as great defensive teams. Uh, you think of uh, Press Virginia, you think of West Virginia, they're Press you. Uh, they're just relentless picking you up full. But Virginia really picks you up full. Uh, they're going to let you reverse the ball. Uh, but then once they get into their half-court defense and set, he's got the formula down. They're playing their gaps and uh, that uh, pack line defense uh, really is their staple. And, uh, the reason why they lead the nation in pretty much every defensive category. Well, I, you know, I think that people now sort of take it for granted that UVA's got it humming and they've got one of the great programs in the ACC and the country. But it, you think back to what it was before Tony Bennett got there. It has been a totally remarkable turnaround. And I think, Malcolm, the genius of it is that he made a clear decision. We're not going to out-recruit Duke in North Carolina. We're not going to have as many five-star guys. We're not going to go the route of the one-and-dones. We're going to do something totally different that those teams never see, and it has allowed them to win the league. He's had one season under 500, and that was his first year when he's took, taken over. Everything else, he's been above 500. And look, you've got to put him right up there uh, with those top teams. In terms of the last five years, uh, last year in particular, I think, was probably his best job. They weren't picked. A lot of people did not think they were going to, uh, A, win the ACC regular season title and then go on and win uh, the conference tournament. Uh, really just a masterful job by Tony Bennett. Now, I know folks are going to say, listen, they had the first-round loss uh, to UMBC. Uh, they did that without uh, arguably one of their uh, key pieces. And Hunter, he was out in that game. Uh, although a lot of people still think, hey, they should have won that sure. game. Uh, but certainly what they've done uh, in his run since he's taken over has been remarkable. Yeah, a year ago, unranked in the preseason, all the way to number one overall. It, when you dig a little deeper, Malcolm, at some of these numbers, it, it's remarkable. Top ten in the last 21 weeks, seven 20-win years at UVA, five straight NCAA tournaments. And how about this? 
He is second only to John Wooden in terms of National Coach of the Year awards. He's won it three times. Anytime your name is mentioned with John Wooden and you're 115 and six when you score 70 or more, you're doing pretty well. And I think the final piece is he's putting guys out that are playing for a paycheck at the next level. Now look, that's not what he's all about. Obviously, uh, he wants these guys to graduate and so forth, but he's brought in that type of talent. He's got a great eye. Go back to the Clay Thompson story. Sure. Uh, he recruited him when he was at Washington State. Uh, that guy was pretty good, and imagine that. Uh, he said, look, not too many people were recruiting him. Uh, similar to Malcolm Brogdon. Uh, I think that guy was pretty good, and uh, he's having himself a pretty good NBA career right now. So uh, he's done it the right way in terms of finding those gems, finding those guys that are a little under-recruited, and then he puts them in his system, and he continues to develop them. Uh, again, it's just been uh, really fun to watch, and he's got his system and formula down, and it's working. Brogdon and Joe Harris both doing it at the next level. He says he, he, you know, he knows that they're right in the throes of an NBA season, but he wants to keep that communication going. He checks in with those guys, and he said, you know, the, the best part about it is that they bought into the UVA system. They, they did it exactly the right way, and to see it translate, uh, that's what, what more can a coach ask for. This guy, I think, is a huge piece for Virginia and a thunderous dunk for Braxton Key. Maybe he can be that extra offensive piece in crunch time. Jim Christen not happy with another uncontested, of uh, this time, dunk. And all you want in these situations, if you're Jim Christen, yes, you know uh, this game is out of hand, but you want your guys to continue to compete. No help, he making a pay, and... Now the bench for Virginia is loving that. That's just too easy. And that has been the story in the second half. How many wide open dunks as they lead by now 25? You know, Malcolm, again, the only reason Florida State kind of made it a respectable ball game was that they pulled the starters. Do you think that right now, maybe Tony Bennett is saying to his guys, let's really close this thing before... We, we, we maybe get to some of the reserves late down the, the stretch in this one. Well, coaches never are happy until there's <laughs> zeros uh, on the clock. Uh, I don't think Tony Benny's been it's any different. Obviously, uh, this one looks like it's uh, pretty much over, but uh, he doesn't want his guys to stop playing. And I think on the other side, if you're Jim Christian, uh, the one thing you want to see, keep competing. Uh, yes, the game's out of hand, but don't give up on defense. You don't want to see guys going in for uncontested dunks. It does not get any easier, unfortunately, for Boston College. They go to Notre Dame, they're at Louisville, and then they're back here to host Florida State. So, I mean, it, you, you take that little five-game snapshot. Yeah, it's life in the ACC, but that, right, that, that is five brutal games, a lot of them on the road. Well, they got to get healthy. And, you know, for Boston College, they got to be able to put together 40 minutes. Uh, they had a similar uh, situation there opener against Virginia Tech on the road. Uh, they were up two at the half, and then they just ran out of gas. I think foul trouble. Uh, they're not deep to begin with, but then they have these injuries. Uh, obviously, that's an issue, uh, but they're going to have to find a way, I think, the biggest thing, uh, defensively closing out games. They started off with a lot of energy tonight as well, too. Um, but then in the second half, it just fell apart, and uh, that's problematic for Jim Christian because, like you said, it's not getting any easier. Yeah, maybe the lack of depth, the lack of experience trying to find all these combinations, it's not easy in the non-conference when you, you can't find one group of five that really click and find chemistry. The, the one thing that is hovering over Christian at this point is that this Boston College team really had two games in the bag, Providence and Hartford, and late losses in both. Some, some decisions to be made about whether to foul with a three-point lead. So here they find themselves going into the ACC gauntlet, having sort of squandered a couple opportunities before the conference schedule. Some signs of wholesale changes, as I've already seen Ty Jerome go to the bench. Now a top of the key three. That one falls for Jay Huff, an unlikely triple. Say that he's now four for seven on the year. <laughs> Malcolm, everybody who wears a blue and orange jersey can shoot it from deep. Put back to Popovich. 
one of the things we talked about a little earlier, the loss of Jerome Robinson for Boston College. Uh, if he comes back, obviously it's a different scene. Uh, having him and Kai Bowman, uh, maybe that turns into, you know, probably one of the better backcourts, not just in the ACC, but in the country. Uh, he leaves, and now you're forced to play with a lot of young guys. Uh, we talked about it, Chris Heron Jr. Uh, started off originally as a walk-on injuries. He's starting a lot of game for you, uh, and that has really hurt uh, Jim Christen in the development uh, of this team. Well, of course, the big question looming over Virginia, can they win the ACC to do that? They'll have to beat Duke. How do they do that? Talk about that when we return. Back inside the Conti Forum with Malcolm Huckabee, you can see here, Malcolm, I mean, look, it, it, a late game tonight, Saturday, day game at Clemson, and, and everyone will be looking at this one right here, at Duke. Uh, that is the game in the middle portion of the ACC slate. How do they beat them? Well, I called the game uh, Gonzaga in the Maui Finals. Duke against the Zags, and I think the Zags did a couple of things in that game. They didn't turn the ball over. In that first half, uh, Duke only had four first-half points. Virginia is one of the best teams in the country at not turning the ball over. They lead the nation only eight turnovers a game. So that's the first thing. If you look at what Virginia has done, shooting the ball. Uh, they've shot over 40% on the season uh, from beyond the arc. You're going to have to knock down some shots. And then you have to force Duke to be a perimeter jump shooting team. That path line defense is set up to force you uh, to shoot jumpers. And that's what you have to do against Duke. I think that's the formula. I think Virginia, if you're going to beat a team like Duke, you're going to have to do those things in order to beat them because they are just so explosive in the open court. They have the talent all around. But I do believe Virginia has the formula to beat Duke. And Zion Williamson, 30 and 10 again last night. He is, at the moment, you think, sort of like the consensus number one pick in the NBA draft. It was a big topic on Get Up this morning. I, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on that, Malcolm, because it's, it's interesting for a guy who some people, like Jay Williams, say is the best prospect since LeBron. I, I, other people are not as sold. What do you think? I'm, you know, I think I have not seen his mid-range game yet. Again, he's it's been all dunks or set threes. So he's not a guy that's going to break you down, uh, cross you up, and then step back into a jumper. He's going to have to develop that at the next level. Everybody's athletic. Everybody's big at the next level. Uh, you look at guys like Anthony Davis. You look at guys like KD. Uh, they are agile, but they can shoot threes. They can break you down off the dribble, but they have a mid-range game. Uh, I think that's going to be the one area that he's going to have to continue to improve upon. But, again, we just haven't seen a guy that big, that explosive. Uh, the closest thing I've seen, a guy like Sean Kemp, but he wasn't able to handle like Zion could. Uh, and I don't think he weighed as much. I mean, a guy that goes six seven and 265 pounds or whatever he is, uh, it's just tough to match up against at the college level. No way you can do that one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, he's doing stuff that we just have not seen a person that size do at any level. Now Tony Bennett has brought some of the reserves on. And there's a turnover. This is sort of a teachable moment for these guys after what happened at Florida State as a lay-in for Tabs. It's not a big deal for Tony Bennett, but he would like the guys that he brings in at the very end to be able to sort of hold the line a little more effectively. He was on it. They were here an hour before the shoot-around uh, was ready to start his bench guys. Uh, he was not happy with how they performed in that game. Uh, he wants those guys, because they're important as well in terms of practice. Uh, he wants them putting up resistance, so I expect them to have a better effort uh, to close out this game. Nice little move by Winston Tapp. I think that Jim Christian would like to see more of that throughout the game. He was hot early, and then in some ways, now a lot of this is Virginia's defense, but in a way, he kind of receded. It's a corner three ball try that falls. And it's Cody Statman, the freshman from Australia. Well, it's just been a clinic in the second half uh, for Virginia. A wide open look after wide open look. And Tony Bennett has to be pleased with how his team came out in the second half. Uh, Close this game out. Seven-point lead, and we'll see whether Virginia even elects to take another shot. They will not do it. Another clinical effort from Virginia. 
Malcolm, they shot at 60% from the field, and they blow the doors off the Eagles. Well, uh, they were, came into this game as the top-ranked defense, uh, number four team in the country. Uh, they did not disappoint. Uh, they put on another dominant performance on the defensive side, and then offensively, uh, they were surgical. Uh, wide open looks, dunks, they were unselfish with the ball. <laughs> They're going to be very difficult to beat. I would think Tony Bennett would be pleased. You know what? I'm going to ask him. We'll have Tony when we come back. Blowout for the Wahoos on Chestnut Hill. That man joins us next. A dominant win for still undefeated UVA and Amadi Diakite was a big part of that, and that has to bring a smile to the face of our guest, the head coach at UVA, Tony Bennett. Tony, thanks so much for taking the time. you got the stat sheet in front of you. Uh, it has to, in a lot of ways, I know you won't be thrilled with every aspect of it, but that, that's a great win for you on the road in the ACC. No, always when you get on the road and, and are victorious, that's a big deal. And I thought offensively we had answers tonight, um, had some versatility. As you mentioned, Mamani made some nice plays. Um, and, and defensively, we have some work to do, and uh, they missed some shots, and they were touching our paint and splitting us, and um, that'll have to improve, but, um, but uh, definitely guys stepped up, and we got a good lift from a number of players. Coach Kyle Guy came into this game last three games. He was shooting over 70% from beyond the yard. Yeah, what's wrong with him? I mean, <laughs> and, 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 so. I, mean I, I can't find anybody playing better than him in college basketball. Just talk about the season and his progression since he's got on campus yeah he had eight rebounds is that right yeah again so he's been rebounded but no all these guys have improved there um, there's just something and you know as a player when you become an upperclassman um it's just you're you're ready and i think those guys have had a good off season and they're playing at a, a real high level and you know and kyle he's not just a shooter he does a lot more things and again offensively i don't have too many problems with the way um, any of our guys played today. We just got to tighten up on that other end, and uh, I mean that sincerely. Well, we talked about uh, another guy that you coached with your time when you were at Washington State, <laughs> a guy that's pretty good shooter, uh, yes, Clay Thompson. Uh, any comparisons between those two right there? <laughs> Lightning quick releases and, um, you know, special shooters, guys that can certainly their textbook form, but they can kind of twist and lean and fade away when they need to get their shot. So I've been fortunate, and Joe Harris was a pretty good shooter too. Uh, Diakite, you know, you clearly know your team, Coach, and you said to us before this game, he's the X Factor, and it yep. looked like BC was so worried with your shooters that he really created some some easy looks inside. He sure did, uh, and that was helpful because, you know, Ty is going to get tracked hard, and, and Kyle, as we talked about, and DeAndre, so I thought Mamadi, um, you know, he made, you know, his athleticism show, but he made some nice moves, and uh, that was, again, offensively helpful got on the offensive glass, and uh, he is, I think, an X factor for us. Uh, you're going to dissect this game far beyond the final score, the box score, all that stuff. I mean, it, you talk about the defense, and uh, specifically, where will you point to the, to the areas that w when you go to Duke will need to be better to get a win in that kind of yeah. a game? We go to Clemson on Saturday. So, <laughs> Excuse um, me. Don't yeah. mean to get ahead. Yeah, no, uh, I think you got the schedule wrong. <laughs> Do you not? Um, no, I think in transition, they, they were down the floor so fast, and we were not – back and set and they were getting some open looks and then we were stretching they were touching the paint so we'll have to certainly tighten those things up but when you can learn in a victory that's okay and um well, there'll be a lot to teach on the film but um you know they're banged up boston colleges they need to get healthy and um you know they're they're certainly capable but they missed some open shots and that helped us out looked like deandre hunter really got it going especially sure in that did. second half yeah it was good to see that he uh, you know, didn't get off to as quick of a start, but, you know, got to the foul line and um, was aggressive and did some good things. Well, it was just such a complete team win for you and and scoring from up and down. Here's some looks at some of the plays from Hunter. We know that he's coming back off the inner injury, and, and this is not always a, a spot where he gets featured. But, uh, Coach, look, he, he, he can be that real elite offensive player for you, can he not? He's versatile. I think we got a number of those guys, and again, um, he's a triple threat guy where he can knock down the three and play off the bounce, score in the post, and uh, get on the glass. And you know, he's um, he's again continued like Kyle to improve and and just get better. Well, coach, I'm gonna go off. Uh, I talked to you a little bit about the guys that you had in the past, Joe Harris, Malcolm Brogdon. Do you keep in contact with those guys, and can you share some of the stories? Well, those guys are special. All the guys I've coached, I've been so fortunate to have those kinds of players, and they mean the world to me because they represent our program. They're humble young men, 
that are terrific players, and there's a number of them. So I'm just thankful to have coached them, and I'm always pulling for them and uh, try to send them an encouraging text every now and then. But they know where my heart is, and uh, they're making us proud. Well, let me get this straight. Clemson is next, so you, you, you quick turnaround in some ways. Late game here in Boston, head back down, and uh, what are going to be? What, what are you focusing on going to the next one? Well, we'll just we'll look at the tape and learn. I know they're celebrating their national championship. Ironically, two <laughs> years ago when we played there, same scenario. We played at noon on a Saturday. They celebrated their national championship football team and uh, we played them same thing again but uh, great respect for for coach Brunell and uh, they're athletic they're tough and uh, it's always going to be a war well coach we, we appreciate you making the time congrats on a great win and good luck down there at Little John thanks guys All right, that's the head coach of the Cavaliers Tony Bennett a pre- tremendous effort by his Cavaliers we thank him for his time and uh, Malcolm Huckabee look some final thoughts here from the Conti Forum that, that was as complete as you can do it at least on one end for UVA well they're Dominant on defense. Uh, they showed the offensive side tonight. Uh, they're balanced. They went inside. They went outside. Uh, it's going to be interesting as they get deeper into ACC play. He doesn't want to hear about Duke, but all eyes will be on that game. There's a team just down Tobacco Road that'll be a test as well. But first things first, the Clemson Tigers. All is well in the Northeast tonight for the Hoos. From Malcolm Huckabee and our great crew, Will Fleming. So long from Boston. UVA stays undefeated.